All right, welcome back, everybody. Today, I should be able to get the final electrical checkouts done. All the lights, turn signals, parking lamps, things like that. I'm going to temporarily wire stuff up, see if I can make it all work. Oh, and also the dreaded light switch on the steering column. Thanks for watching. So after I got everything routed and knew what I was doing, I took the uh, everything back apart wiring wise up in the up underneath the dash. I put the heater in, so you can see the pipes coming in here. I haven't piped them in yet because I got to drain a little bit of coolant, I believe, to do that without making a mess. But I routed everything back in, and you can see that uh, I got my power supply here drawing about a half an amp or so with just the ignition on. So you can see that the oil light and the red ignition light are on. And everything, uh, believe it or not, everything works. Here's the fan. That's really loud, but that's the fan for the heater. Windshield wipers work. And the, uh, the uh, stop position even works, if I can time it right to show you. Yeah, you can kind of see that. So that all, uh, that works pretty cool. I still have yet to come through the, the switch here for the lights. Fortunately, I have another one of those, so uh, I'm going to put it on the bench here, and that bag there is another one of these. I'm going to put it on the bench and just going to test all the positions. You can also flash your, your high beams. I guess a lot of people don't, uh, don't realize that the, the, uh, the Spitfire has that capability, but i got to figure out what wires come out of what, because the wiring diagram only shows four coming out of that switch, and I've got five. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but we'll come through that and see what switch does what in all the positions for this headlight switch. This number 38 here, that's the switch in the steering column. 43 here, that's the, the main beam switch that's down on the footwell. The British cars don't have that. The switch is wired up a little bit differently, but this is the American version. So essentially what you have here is you have this wire coming in, that's your main feed. If you trace that back, that goes all the way up to the control box. So essentially that's main power from the battery feeding right into the switch with a heavy brown with a blue tracer wire. This other little wire here that shows brown, that's coming up to number 7 here, that's the ignition switch that also comes back into the control box which is also tied essentially directly to the battery. So you've got two direct battery feeds to this switch. One is for what I'll call the normal headlight operation and this other one over here that is for flashing the high beams a lot of uh, from what I understand a lot of people don't realize that you can actually flash the high beams on a Triumph Spitfire again it's all about creature comfort so those two leads come in one blue solid blue wire goes out and goes into the foot switch for the main beam flash and the other switch comes out and goes to number 36 here that's your fascia or for the instrument panel lights and it also goes up into the fuse box down to the fuse and into your parking lamps front to back so essentially that's just a straight shot into your parking lamps but it is fused so the switch has three positions off it's fully up and nothing happens obviously the first position down what it does is turn the parking lamps on and allows you via number 36 here which is that fascia switch for the instrument lights allows you to turn the instrument lights on so it's obviously and, and different from your car at home or as soon as you turn the parking lamps on your instrument lights come on you gotta take an extra step here I don't, I don't really know why they did it that way but, but they did and then when you go to the third position that's when you get your headlights to come on the way that the American car works is the headlights will come on in the third position and then if you then go on and further click the thing on the foot, that'll bring your main beams on, which is the number 42 here. Or excuse me, that'll bring your main beams on, which is the number 41 here. Normally, number 42 is your low beam. So this blue wire comes out, comes into the switch. When the foot switches in its what I'll call normal position, you connect these two positions here and that goes to the low beam and then when you click the switch it goes over here and goes to the high beam now there's one more wire on the column switch that's not shown and you can see I've penciled it in here it's a blue with a white tracer wire 
all this stuff over here, which is my high beams, that's all of my blue with white tracer stuff. What that does is that directly shorts when I want to flash my main beams. I come from the battery into the control box, out of the control box, into the ignition switch, out of the ignition switch, through that fuse, which incidentally is not on my brand new wiring harness, and into the column. Now this shows in the drawings that you should be a black, or excuse me, a brown with a black tracer wire. It's not. It's just straight brown. And then this little line that goes across here, it's hard to see. When I bring that column switch back and do flash my high beams, that's what closes. That little switch comes down and touches these two top contacts. So now you've got a short across that switch, and then the wire that's not there goes right into the foot switch, and that's directly connected to the high beam. So that's how the high beam thing works. And that was the key, and that was the question that I had that I that have now figured out. Now this not really a highly technical flashing thing here for the switch. You can see this spring here, this little tab right here, that's that connection to that brown wire. And you can actually see this brown wire is messed up. It's been cut. And then the little blue with the white tracer one is right in here. And that connects right there. This whole switch pivots. If you can see how that, how that does that. Not real high tech there. But that's, uh, that's how you flash your main beams. And that's the only purpose of those two wires coming out of this switch. And again, that white with a or blue with a white tracer is not shown and that's where I'm showing it here so now I'm gonna go back over to the car wired up the way that this shows what you see here is the foot switch that I was talking about it's got three possible connections on the inside there with just tabs the center one is my main feed and the ones on either outside are what go to the either the high beam or the low beam depending on where the switch is so I'll show you that real quick. So I've got my center feed there, got my fluke set up. So now the low beams would be lit or the high beams. I don't think it really matters how you wire it up. But when I press the switch, it obviously makes a short, makes the noise. Now my low beams would be on or the opposite would be on and I'll go ahead and touch this one. And that makes the short there. So one way or the other, the lights are gonna be on when I power it up from a headlight switch into the main feed there and actually turn the headlights on, that's when power comes in and goes through this switch out to the headlights. So the center is going to get the blue wire. And then, like I said, I don't think it really matters on or off which way you do it as long as you're consistent. So let's see, right now it is in where this one is hot, so we're going to call Center line is going to be with the heavy solid blue, and then these two out here are going to be for my red with blue tracer, or blue with red tracer, I should say. That's going to go out to my low beams, and then the white, the blue with the white tracer, that's going to go out to my high beams. All right, so off, off center a little bit here, but you can see solid blue into the center line, blue with the white, excuse me, the white tracer out on the left there and blue with the red tracer out on the right. Now this wire comes up and comes all the way into here, which you can't see. Zoom out a little bit here for you. So that wire comes from the foot switch, comes all the way up, it comes into this guy here, which I just have zip tied for uh, my convenience. Now if you look, I came out of three wires, but now I'm sitting with, get this guy out of the way, with four. So here's my blue with my white tracer, blue with the red tracer, the solid blue, this fourth guy here, this is brown with a blue tracer. And you have the other end of that wire right there. Zoom in a little bit for you. This was the thing that's not shown. You notice that this connection here is a tab connection. It's not a bullet connector. Up underneath the dash is the brown wire coming from, get this on camera for you, up underneath the dash is a ignition switch coming out with that brown wire that I was talking about coming into that fuse that's not there and coming into a brown and black. That's the feed for that. So unlike what the wiring diagram shows you, it's not a direct feed into <coughs> the switch for the headlight. It's a feed into the foot switch. 
So it's definitely, uh, definitely a little weird how that thing is wired up. And I think that might be some of the difference between a wiring diagram and a schematic. Let's see if I can figure this out without hurting my brain. Been moving along here. Unfortunately, the flasher on the column switch that I have in there is not working. I thought I had tested all that stuff before I put it together, but, uh, but I guess not. So, <clears throat> what you can see here is a headlight, obviously, and on the left is the blinker, and on the right is the parking lamp, and they're just wired up a little bit just to see if they work. So the headlights will work without the ignition switch on, but the uh, parking, or excuse me, and the parking lamps, but the blinker won't. So I got my little power supply hooked up over there, and uh, we're going to turn the headlight on. So the first switch should be the parking lamp, so this guy should come on. Yay, there we go. And then the next one should be the headlight, and that comes on. Now the high beam turn the high beams on and the light goes off which makes sense because it's two filaments but I got a problem right now where the high beam line for some reason is grounded out and I gotta, I gotta figure that out real quick but we'll turn that on we'll turn the lights off turn the blinker on there you go actually blinks so the little flasher unit is that little silver guy up there can just barely hear it going. And it's getting slower, which is kind of interesting. Anyway, so this all seems to work when I turn uh, everything on. Really loads down the power supply and the blinker kind of stops blinking. Needs a, I think it's a pretty good current draw on that flasher to make it work properly, but whatever. So that all works. So I got to figure out what the grounded is on the, uh, the blue with the white. And it's grounded even if I unplug it from everything, which makes me a little nervous. But I'll try to track that down and see if I can get the high beam uh, to work. Tail lights. Got the brake and parking lamp here and then the turn signal down here. I don't have anything on right now, but I'll go ahead and I'll turn the parking lamp on. And you'll see a dimmer bulb going. Hit the turn signal. You'll see that one going. And then hit the brake and you'll see it get real bright. Now you notice I've got a jumper here that connects the grounds together. When this gets put together and screwed down, that'll, that'll complete the ground. But I, I, uh, I know I'm not screwing it down to the car right now. That's why that jumper is there. So there's the parking light. You can see that come on. Should be the turn signal flashing. Yeah, that's flashing. And then I'll hit the brake real quick. And you should see that get brighter. There you go. So that tells me that at least on the driver's side, the lights are all going to work. I still have to figure out the high beam thing going on up there, but, uh, but I wanted to show you that. I'll show you something else here in a second on how these, uh, these lights are kind of wired up at their terminations. So here's how this wires are connected, and really there's, there's nothing to it. It's just a bullet connector and the wire is just fed through and then bent over and it's not even uh, it's not even soldered on most of the ones that I've come across from the factory so it's just uh, give you, gives you that little bullet connector there and then that is what slides into like that portion down there and that portion down there is actually a bullet connector in there right now but that's, uh, that's it so there's no soldering which is kind of convenient and it just it's all there is to it all right, so I have figured out the switch line up here. I've got the headlamp switch from the black car. The way I've got that connected is the, if you remember, you had the two leads coming off that weren't well documented, the green, or excuse me, the brown, solid brown one, and then the blue with the white tracer. So underneath the dash is a purple, two purple wires that come into a, a bullet uh, splice connector, these little rubber uh, boot things there and that is if you look in the uh, standard British wiring thing purple signifies essentially a direct feed off the battery so you could hook your radio up to that I assume other things even with the ignition off as long as there's a as long as there's batteries connected that's hot so that's where I plug the brown lead into and then the 
blue with the white tracer went into the double one that's in here that goes out to the lights. So now the car is not, the ignition's not on, nothing's on. I got the headlight down here. When I pull the switch back and make that connection, the headlamp, which you can kind of see the reflection down there in the corner, that headlamp flashes. So that, that's the high beam and that totally loads out the power supply. It's, it's maxed out. So that thing draws however many amps it draws. So it's not very bright. But that's how it's going to work. So now i got to see if I can get this other switch fixed or figured out or some getting out of there. Or some I'm having struggling getting it out of the steering column with it sitting in there. But that really is the last thing to troubleshoot. And now that I've got that figured out and it's just a matter of a switch thing, I, uh, I'm pretty happy. So electrically, the car appears sound. I misspoke when I said it was electrically sound. The one last thing I had to do was, was the horns. The horns weren't working. The relay was clicking, but there was no, um, no beepy beepy. So what I've done here is essentially jumpered out the horn relay, that guy back there, and I'm connecting the purple, which again is coming right from the battery, to the purple yellow, which runs here to this horn and there to that horn, and grounded, obviously. Now the, the horns take some oomph, so I have the actual battery connected here, and with that jumping out, it's like I've got the horn button pressed all the time. All right, we'll see if it beeps. Yes, it does. So now that tells me that probably that horn relay is shot. That's, uh, that's anything I can think of. Something in there probably burned through, just not passing the voltage. But, but that's good. So now I know that uh, essentially with the exception of final wiring and things like that, the electrical system is sound. I was able to get the switch out. This is the, uh, the wire cover to take care of these wires so they don't hang into your to your uh, knees and everything as you're driving the car. I had to loosen this piece here which cinches up on that. Slide that back so that I could get the wires loose so that I could get the switch out. It's a little bit of a pain in the rear. So that's the contact kind of pointing up at you and when you bend the thing back it touches. So this little tab probably just over the years and years of use and everything like that it just kind of moved out of the way a little bit. So all I did was I bent it down closer to the contact point and twisted it uh, to, the, to your right as you're looking at it there to also get a little closer to the contact point. And now when I do it, oh meter closed, nice little short. So that's it. So I'll just slide that back together, put the steering column back together and I'll be all set. Got the power supply hooked up. See what happens. Parking lamps, headlights, works, flash. Just barely, the power supply can only put out about six volts. So that, that's, that's the limit of the power supply. That's why it's getting dimmer instead of brighter. Turn the uh, flight that the brights on fully at the foot switch. Alright, so that works. I'll uh, go ahead and document the wiring here and then uh, show you what the final setup was. So let's go over the final rundown here. Got everything put back together. Everything still works. So this blue color, that's the one coming from the foot, excuse me, the foot switch right here. So we've got three wires going to the foot switch. This skinny one here, that's the turn signal. This one that's a little bit fatter, that's from the steering column light switch. And this purple and black here, that's for the horn. That's really easy because that's just a one-to-one. -one, and that runs out to the horn solenoid. Then off of the turn signal, you have essentially the signal uh, center line, the, the, the power feed, and then the right and the left, that was easy. Those are just straight up two. And then you've got two wires coming out for each side turn signal and then this center one for the power. And then you get to the column light switch. So this is where it starts to get a little tricky again with the stuff that's not documented. So the blue, solid blue, solid blue, that's easy. The brown with the blue tracer goes to the brown with the blue tracer, that's easy. 
The red with the green chaser goes to the red with the green chaser. That's easy. The two that are not documented is this brown coming out and this white, or excuse me, blue with a white tracer coming out. So the brown goes into the purple. The purple is a direct feed from the battery. That's if you follow the British standard for wiring colors, purple means it's a, it's a battery feed for like accessories and things. The horn works off of the purple wire. Up here, if you can see that fuse, that fuse, that purple wire, that purple wire goes to that guy. The other side of that is brown. Again, brown from the standard British wiring, brown means battery. So that's a direct line from the battery, comes into there, into the wiring harness in purple and comes down. So that's brown to brown there. And then the blue with the white tracer goes into the blue and the white tracer here go into the headlights. Specifically, these are the high beams. So you've got the switch position. It's got three positions. Right now it's off. Nothing comes on. When you go down one, that turns on the parking lamps. At that point, you can also pull the light switch out to turn on the uh, instrument lighting. Doesn't come on by itself. So now what happens is the parking lamps come on and that runs down the wires to get out to the parking lamps. When you go down one more click, now you've got your headlights on. So you're either going, again, the blue is your main feed. I'm showing you the foot switch here. And then you've either got the blue with the white tracer, which is your high beams, or the blue with the red tracer, which is the low beams. So you want the low beams to normally come on. So there's your blue with the red tracer coming out of the foot switch. That goes into the blue with the red tracer on the wiring harness side and goes out to the front of the car to the headlights and then or you can do the blue with the white and that comes out of the foot switch here with the blue with the white and goes into the double out to the main wiring harness and that's where the flasher connects in and then you've got this blue or excuse me brown with blue tracer and that also in the foot switch just for a moment comes out of it and into it right here. That goes under the dash and into the right there where it connects from brown again from the ignition switch and that's power. So all that stuff allows the lights to turn on, turn off, flash the high beams and everything without power to the car as in with the car running and the ignition switch on. So I'm gonna make a note of all this stuff, update the wiring diagram that I have and try to make it correct because Triumph didn't do a great job of putting out a proper wiring diagram. All right, folks, that's all I got. Thanks for much for watching. Please leave a comment below. Tell me what you think. Next up, I'm going to be doing some painting. So time to clear this garage out a little bit, make some room back there, put up a smaller paint booth, but with the same idea. Get the doors, boot lid, the windscreen frame, uh, the front balance that goes down here. Get that taken care of, and then we're going to finish it up with the bonnet. So back to the painting and body work phase. Not, uh, not my favorite thing to do, but obviously it needs to be done. Take care. Cheers.